Columbina, the Little Dove, and the third, Fatui Harbinger. Let's talk about her. So before you watch this, I recommend checking out my last video covering the three god kings of Sumeru, the Scarlet King, the Goddess of Flowers, and Ruka Dabata, because it covers a lot of the backstory of what I believe could tell us, well, where she's from, and her mysterious identity, as well as the history of Tevat, with the Primordial One and the Second Who Came, aka the Sustainer, the war that came from their conflict. I don't want to repeat a lot of that information, so that will cover a lot of the basis of this video, but with that out of the way, let's begin. Before we get into the more speculatory aspects of this video, let's cover what at least we know 100%. Her interests align with the rest of the Harbingers and the Tsaritsa, so she obviously has her own grudge against Celestia and the Heavenly Principles. What that might mean exactly, we'll talk about in a sec. Her design resembles a Seraphim Angel or Archangel of some type. That is deliberately intentional by Genshin. A Seraphim Angel is a type of celestial or heavenly being originated in ancient Judaism. We know most of Genshin's story and lore is based off of Gnosticism and a lot of other real world religions, so this adds up. She has a power that rivals gods. This can be interpreted many ways, and is very vague. They do this intentionally, and I know in my last video about her, people had very different opinions on this. I personally think her power is closer to an Archon rather than a lower level God, because an Archon is the one telling us this. Not all Archons are the same in strength wise, and I'm not saying that she could just casually take the Shogun on 1v1, but I'd say with almost certainty, she's not far behind. Plus she has an X factor we'll get into in a bit. She's not normal. Her motive's not that obvious. She's a complete mystery. Piero, Dodore, the captain, and the rest of the Harbingers are very straightforward. All at least somewhat organic with clear motives. Some more evil than others, but all with reasons and stories for why they became who they are. Even Harbingers we know little about like Sandrone, the Rooster or Arlecchino, we have a good idea about them, but Columbina is a complete mystery, and has something about her that is just quite not explainable, which very much ties into what Scatamooch and Tartaglia say. The Fatui Harbingers are ranked by strength, and I have no idea why that girl is number three. I'd test my skills with every Harbinger who ranks above me if I had the chance, but when it comes to her, something just doesn't feel right. Anyway, you should be careful around her. Hmm, let me ask. What should you do if you were to encounter a damsel who is oblivious and innocent at any given time, and unconcerned and unfeeling in any given situation? If it were me, I could at least challenge her to a fight. But if it were you, with your conscience, I would stay away from her. Neither seems scared of the Tore or Piero. Tartaglia is even intrigued by the captain, even though he doesn't compare. Both Scatamooch and Tartaglia never agree on anything, but they both agree and tell you to stay the hell away from her. Why? This is a huge detail. Child wants nothing to do with her, despite him being obsessed with strong opponents. Scatamooch says something similar, but also has an interesting detail saying he could at least put up a fight. Which makes me believe not only is she a juggernaut powerhouse, but she affects mortals differently than synthetic beings or puppets. In an interesting but dangerous and deadly way. What I take away from this is because Scatamooch is a puppet, he can at least put up a fight but I think she will have some sort of effect on organic or normal living beings, beings like the Traveler. Scatamooch doesn't sound hopeful he can win either, despite wanting to rip the Dore, the second Harbinger, apart. That says a lot, and I'm curious why we wouldn't be able to put up a fight. Does she have sinister mind control or demon-like abilities that can incapacitate living beings? Can she manipulate emotions? The mind? life itself. Is she the most dangerous harbinger? Child straight up says something doesn't feel right about her. 
and what Scaramucci said made me think of a movie, the movie Bird Box. Now long story short, it was a movie where humanity started killing themselves from some mysterious shadowy monster that you never actually get to see. It was based on the rapture, which is from the Bible, and the end of the world. When most people envision the rapture, they think of people ascending into heaven. However, nowhere in the Bible is this explicitly depicted. Perhaps in a Christian rapture, people still needed to die to reach the afterlife. And what quicker way to die than to do it yourself? These monsters might actually be angels, not demons, convincing humanity to come with them to live in heaven for eternity. Some evidence to this is that before they killed themselves in the movie, they could see dead loved ones and welcome their death. More evidence to this is it affected unstable people differently like psychopaths or people with schizophrenia. And one man draws the monster and it looks different each time he would draw it. But all of the drawings had something in common. They all resembled biblically accurate looking angels. And just off the record real quick, biblically accurate looking angels are unsettling to say the least. Now why is this important? Well, that is exactly what Columbina is based off of, an angel of some sort. And I think she not only will have a sinister transformation like this, but she may also have some similar powers to that in the show, where she can control or kill living beings at will. I'm speculating obviously of course, but what Scatamooch said gave me that vibe. Plus the fact that him and Child are uneasy about her. She is as strong as gods, and is very obviously based off of some sort of angel, or demon even. It makes sense she would have biblical powers. I also believe she has a similar origin as the goddess of flowers. After watching my last video, you will know she is from the original world of the primordial one, a member of the Sealy race. She somehow survived the war with the second who came and didn't get transformed like all the other Sealies. I think Columbina has a similar origin. Being a very ancient being, it's been speculated already she could also be from the Sealies, maybe a powerful one since we know this is possible with the Goddess of Flowers now. I think it's more likely though that she is from Celestia itself, and quite possibly one of the four shades. We know the shades are like angels to the primordial one, aka the original god, and being that Columbina is based off an angel, would that be likely? But which shade would she be? We know the artifacts represent them all, the primordial one, who is the crown artifact, and the four shades, the timepiece representing the shade of time, the goblet representing the shade of space, the flower representing the shade of life, and of course the feather representing the shade of death. And these shades could also be interpreted as angels. Now similar to in the movie Bird Box, they depict them as shades. All the history that we know about the Primordial One and its four shades are depicted as just that, shades are shadowy like creatures, similar to the movie. But what if that is just humanity's interpretation of what are actually the Primordial One's angels? So the four angels. Now if Columbina was one of the four shades, which one would she be? The god of time and space seem less likely, since we know Istaroth who wrote before Sun and Moon in Economia was the shade of time, and the shade of space is much more, more likely I guess a cosmic sort of entity or being. I think it's less likely, but you never know. But what about the shade of life or death? Hold on a second. So you know how the flower artifact can only be an HP stat which represents life. And the feather is only an attack stat artifact which represents death. What if Columbina is in fact the shade or angel of death? It adds up and she actually represents the feather artifact. This even lines up with her constellation, the little dove. And she even has feathers in her design, six in fact, in the shape of an angel-like wings. It would also make sense why she would align herself with the Fatui, or share their motives having a grudge for the heavenly principles. 
as well as her not clearly being from any nation we know of. And we know Genshin adds these little subtle details. This perfectly would align with her sinister power, unexplainable origin, her power that rivals gods, why we wouldn't be able to put up a fight, like Skatamut states, and just her overall mystery. It would explain why Tartalia, someone that's not afraid of anyone, feels really uncomfortable around her and says to stay away. She was acting so abnormal during Senora's funeral compared to everyone else. Makes more sense. The rest had things to say. Jokes, comments, and business talk. But she is just singing. Comfortable, smiling. Cause being around death is her whole purpose. It's who she is. That is what I'm starting to believe. I think Columbina is one of the four shades of Faunus, the primordial one. They all represent important aspects that make up the world, and I think she is the angel or shade of death, and now shares the same goals as Piero, after the primordial one was usurped by the second who came, the sustainer. The goddess of flowers believed it was Faunus who issued the divine punishment, but I think Columbina knows the truth, and when they burn Ermansol, it will reveal many lies of Tevat, the false sky, and the ultimate goal the little dove shares with the rest of the Harbingers is getting back to the old world and reclaiming Celestia, breaking the simulation they live in. For most of the humans and gods that live today and have never known anything different than the world we know now would view them as the bad guys and the Archons as their saviors. But that is all part of the false sky that Dore mentions. Columbina and Piero are trying to break. Of course this is my theory on Columbina being the shade of death and why I think all the evidence we have it seems most likely. But maybe she is just from the Seelie race like the goddess of flowers or a different being of sorts that is also possible. But I think either way, she is from the old world before the second who came, and her motives still stand, and why she would detest the heavenly principles. But what do you think? I feel personally, there is way too much evidence to suggest she is just a run of the mill being from Tevat. She may just be the strongest harbinger yet, but why would she be only third then? Wouldn't the first two be stronger? Not necessarily. It could possibly be that the Harbingers having people like Piero and the Dore an amazing Conray attack would be able to suppress her powers. If she is an ancient powerful angel or the shade of death, they would most likely need some sort of grip over her, somewhat like how Cyrus tried to use Giratina, the Pokemon version of Satan, through technology, but that kind of unnatural power can only be contained for so long. Either that or she just joined of her own accord for the same goals, but nobody knows just how scary or powerful she really is. Child and Scatamooch don't want to find out and Nahida seems to have some sort of inkling, but it is interesting to talk about either way. She is definitely my favorite harbinger and the most intriguing to me, in my opinion. So much mystery. She has so much mystery shrouded behind her. And I can't wait to see what they do with this character in the future. All I know is I can't wait. But with that said, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave your thoughts in the comments on what you think Columbina might be, where she might be from. Who knows, perhaps in the next few patches we'll get a lot more detail with the Archon quest coming up. And on that note, we will see you all in the next video. Later.